curious, embarrassed, appalled, or all of the above. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm not the man for you. Why won't you let me in? I had a rough start in life. That's all you need to know. My tastes are very singular. You wouldn't understand. Enlighten me then. Why are you trying to change me? I'm not. It's you that's changing me. What's harder to believe? The boast that this movie features 20 minutes of sex scenes? Or that it means the 100 minute movie has 80 minutes of story? What? That's a lot of talking. But then, do flirting and foreplay count as a sex scene or story? Bottom line, Fifty Shades of Grey is a mystery where many of us don't know what to expect. On the one hand, E.L. James' Twilight fan fiction has sold over 100 million copies worldwide. On the other hand, the entire country of Malaysia just banned Fifty Shades of Grey, classifying it as pornography, which depicts, and I quote, scenes that are not of a natural sexual content. But some BDSM fans think it's totally natural. A considerable number of people swear by this mix of bondage and discipline, B&D, and sadomasochism, S&M, and feel it's actually quite healthy. However, does E.L. James truly understand BDSM, or did it simply seem like something cool to put in her fan fiction, and therefore she hasn't bothered to portray it accurately, both physically and psychologically? Speaking of psychologically, some have also criticized Fifty Shades of Grey for glorifying abusive relationships. Yet were the 100 million people who bought Fifty Shades of Grey forced to do so? The real truth here, and for some it's an ugly truth, is that for all the talk of feminism and equality of the genders, many women, when push comes to shove, would love to be a hot rich guy's plaything. I mean, as I said in my trailer review for Fifty Shades of Grey, would all these women be as interested in Christian Grey's Red Room of Pain if it was in a two-bedroom apartment walk-up instead of a penthouse? After all, Richard Gere didn't exactly play a regular guy in Pretty Woman, either. Ah, Pretty Woman! Back in 1990, the idea of a light romantic comedy about a wealthy corporate raider falling in love with a prostitute was also pretty shocking. But the Gary Marshall film, made for just $14 million, pulled in almost $500 million worldwide, again in 1990. In fact, that year it was the third highest grossing film after Ghost and Home Alone. And it made relatively unknown actress Julia Roberts, the hooker with the heart of gold, a household name. Is Fifty Shades of Grey just the next natural evolution of the Cinderella story? And if so, well, that sounds pretty innocent, doesn't it? Okay, so first off, let's just cut to the chase, because I'm sure many of you are wondering how dirty this movie really is. And I'm here to tell you that Fifty Shades of Grey delivers. But surprisingly, not just with the most graphic sex scenes I've ever seen in a mainstream movie. Seriously, I can't believe this isn't rated NC-17. But it also happens to be a genuinely good movie. I know! Shocker, right? But beware, I am not kidding about the graphic nature of this film. Just as Anastasia discovers, this is not a joke. It truly does depict BDSM, both the pleasure and the pain associated with the practice. And it goes beyond the physicality to also explore the emotional and psychological complexities that go hand in hand with such a relationship. So you need to make an educated decision as to whether or not this is something you want to watch. And you also need to decide who you want to watch it with, because trust me, whoever you watch it with, it's going to open up some weird doors between you through the shared experience. All right, now let's review the movie. And this is the non-spoiler review. The spoiler review will be going up shortly, and there's a link at the end of this video and in the video description, so you can check that out after you've seen the film. Or perhaps now, if you're just too curious to wait. All right, now I'm going to say something I never ever thought I would say, and that's that E.L. James is a freaking genius. And I think it's a real shame that the media has depicted her as this crazed Twilight fan who just got lucky with some fan fiction, when that is obviously not the case. I mean, sure, she might be a crappy writer, but in terms of uh, crafting the bigger ideas and putting something together, again, as I said, she's a genius. So what has she crafted here? What has she done? 
Well, you know when you go to a bookstore or a stationery store and they have those little books that are called Porn for Women and they feature hot guys doing chores? Well, that's just meant to get a laugh. That's not really porn for women. This is porn for women in two ways. It covers the whole the whole spectrum and this is why I think it has such a strong fan base and why I believe this movie is going to be incredibly successful. It will deliver on the hype. And that's on the one hand, it embraces that women are just as sexually adventurous, curious, and as hungry as men. But then it also does a brilliant job of setting up the kind of emotional traps that have uh, gotten women in trouble for centuries. I mean, just to show how well this is put together, it's no accident that E.L. James made Anastasia Steele an English lit major. Because Christian de, uh, Grey is the modern day equivalent of Mr. Darcy, Mr. Rochester, Heathcliff, the whole group. Now, the uh, big difference is that he's into BDSM, and this is where I think a slight wrinkle occurs with the film, uh, and why it's a little bit dangerous. And that's that Anastasia, it turns out, isn't into BDSM. Uh, and the way that Christian Grey gets her to go along with him is that while he might wield a, a, a physical stick, he uses an emotional carrot. And that's the promise of romance. Now, you've seen in the trailer, he continuously says, I don't do romance. But the premise here, and this is something else that women have eaten up for centuries, and that's that Anastasia Steele is special. She makes him do things he ordinarily never would do. He breaks all the rules he's had for years uh, because she's so charming and witty and beautiful. Uh, now, I totally believe in the context of the story that Christian Grey is sincere. But the problem is, and this is where the problem arises, is that in real life, most of the times, the people who say these things are not sincere. They're just saying them to get you to do what they want. So anybody watching this and enjoying this film, or just you know taking it in in general, needs to realize that this is a twisted, perverse, sugar-coated fantasy, and that's all. If this stuff happens in real life, and we'll discuss more of that in the spoiler review, uh, some of the genuinely abusive tendencies that are wrapped in fantasy packaging here, um, you should run. This is not by any means a healthy relationship. Now, to be fair, Anastasia Steele is partially to blame as well, because right from the start, you know, she's supposed to be this innocent, but she clearly isn't. She is not only a world-class flirt, like one of the best I've ever seen, like a flirt ninja, but she also, I think, is a manipulator on the level of Christian Grey, and you're really watching two people try to manipulate each other and push and pull to get the relationship that they want. Uh, so I think to some degree that could be a realistic reason as to why maybe she does bring out different qualities uh, or more op openness in Christian Grey. And now all of this is just touched on a little bit. This is this is something where still waters run deep and the reason it has to be still on the surface is because it's a mainstream film. And a more ambitious uh, independent intellectual film might explore these things further. It might explore what Christian Grey would really be like. Uh, but I don't think obviously it would be the huge global block blockbuster that Fifty Shades of Grey is going to be. I also think it's probably going to make a star out of Dakota Johnson. She is really good here. Uh, she is able to be really charming and funny, uh, which is really important with the beginning of the movie to, to bring you into it. And she also does a really good job uh, portraying the emotional arc of Anastasia Steele. Uh, and also what's going on beneath the surface with her. As I said, again, this is a master manipulator who is really playing Christian Grey quite brilliantly. Uh, and she's able to portray that. It doesn't seem accidental. She is a smart individual, and she is, to some degree, I think, a, a good match, or at least uh, um, the most, uh, you know, free-willed person Christian Grey has probably ever interacted with. Now, as for Jamie Dornan, I think that he is fine, but I agree with fans, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey fans, that he's not the ideal Christian Grey. I'll go more into that in my spoiler review, uh, but I think he gets the job done. Uh, and as the movie moves on and we get we get to know Christian Grey a little bit better as Anastasia does, I think he does a little bit better job with the role there. He isn't able to portray the, the steely facade, the, you know, the mysterious steely facade that's I think so important with Christian Grey in the beginning. Uh, I think the beginning of the movie almost rests entirely on Dakota Johnson, and that's why it's so impressive she's able to carry it so well. So 
yes, this is a genuinely good movie that happens to be really close to the edge of porn, in some ways probably like porn. Uh, so again, you need to decide if that's something you want to see. But I will tell you that it's a full-bodied experience uh, and that it's, it delivers not just those you know graphic scenes that the movie has promised, but also delivers a surprisingly complex uh, story that really is uh, a puzzle in Fifty Shades of Grey is actually a great title for this. So that's my review of Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, I didn't expect to give such a good re review. I'm sure some of you didn't expect to hear it. I'm very curious to hear what you, th uh, you, uh, you guys think of the movie who have seen it. Uh, but again, be careful. Don't go if you feel at all you might be uncomfortable watching it. Uh, and I hope to see you over on my spoiler review where we can discuss it even further. Thanks for watching. Bye.